so ordered. I ask unanimous consent to allow members not on the subcommittee to participate in today's hearing and be allowed to ask questions after all subcommittee members have been recognized without objection so ordered. I want to welcome everyone uh, to this hearing of the Military Personnel Subcommittee. Today's hearing is focused on admissions, curriculum, and diversity of thought at the military service academies. I want to thank our witnesses for being with us today. I hope this hearing provides an opportunity for our members to have a productive exchange with our witnesses and provide answers to their questions. First, let me say that I believe our cadets and midshipmen are some of the best and brightest scholars and athletes our nation has to offer. Each year, a small group of Americans enter the military service academies knowing that their path will not be easy, that it demands sacrifice and hard work, and in the end, nearly a decade or more of service to this great country. And that is why we are here today, to ensure that our cadets and MIDs are getting the first-class education and the elite military training that they need. But I do have some concerns. All of the military service academies use race as selection criteria. As Justice Roberts said only last month when striking down affirmative action, quote, eliminating racial discrimination means eliminating all of it. And the Equal Protection Clause applies without regard to any differences of race, of color, or of nationality. It is universal in its application. I believe race-based emissions in any form violate the Constitution and the military service academies must ensure immutable characteristics like race, like color, have no bearing on a candidate's ability to tackle the rigors of the military service academy. It is for this reason that I am particularly proud of the House of Representatives' work last week. The NDAA strongly affirms that admission to our service academies must be on the basis of merit, not on skin color or ethnicity. We need the best and the brightest, regardless of race, nothing else. I am also concerned that diversity, equity, and, and inclusion, as well as theories like gender theory, critical race theory, the list is endless, have replaced a foundation of scientific facts and academic rigor. Brand new Air Force cadets are taught inclusive language. They are told to use parents, caregivers, guardians, instead of mom and dad. They are also told to use partner instead of boyfriend or girlfriend. This would be laughable if it wasn't so dangerous. Instead of being inclusive, it simply makes words meaningless. In fact, it undermines academic rigor and the pursuit of scientific truth in an engineering school. And at the, at the Naval Academy, instructors learn how to create safe spaces for students to fend off triggering materials protect them from microaggressions, and shelter them from violent words. Never mind that these students may one day lead sailors and Marines into battle where there are no safe spaces, and triggers send real bullets downrange. All of this, the inclusive language, the safe spaces, the microaggressions, may hide under a sheen of inclusivity, but it is actually an ideology which serves a purpose. That is, to remake society according to one moral vision, where truth is malleable, words do violence, and the answer to one plus one depends on your identity, not reason and fact. Finally, I am concerned about how a focus on race, identity, and other DEI programs impact the education of our cadets and mids. How can a, how can a cadet, or even an instructor, Express an opinion outside the accepted ideology without being afraid of ridicule or being ostracized, or worse, being called a racist. The news is replete with stories of professors not being sufficiently anti-racist or expressing an opinion outside the norm. Universities have websites dedicated to calling out students and professors on campuses for microaggressions, publicly shaming them. I'm afraid that the service academies aren't much different than these other elite universities, where dissent has been silenced and the free flow of ideas, a hallmark of higher education, has all but ceased. I'm deeply concerned with the path our military service academies are on, particularly if they continue to violate the Constitution and use race as a factor in admissions. I'm also concerned about the future success of our cadets and mids, considering the focus 
on divisive diversity programs that elevate the importance of identity over, the, over that of duty, honor, and service. Before hearing from our witnesses, let me 